Welcome to the Human Resources for Small Business podcast, presented by Zenium HR. I'm your host, Brandon Laws. Whether you're an HR professional or a small business leader, each episode of this podcast is designed to bring you the latest in technical HR and leadership at your convenience. More content is available on our website at www. ZeniumHR.com. Let's dive into today's topic. Okay, we're back. I got Paige Tamlin with me. What's up? Hello. You're always my favorite. Well, Lacey's out right now. Oh, so I was going to say, don't tell Lacey that. <laughs> yeah, Lacey, she'll, she'll hear this. She'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, a new excuse favorite. me. I was the original. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she was the original, so props to her. But yeah. it's good to have you back, Paige. Thank you for having me. So we've got a really interesting topic for today. You actually brought this one to me, and I think it's something we're dealing with on a regular basis. So this article that we're going to talk about came from Sherm, and it was... I guess it's not really an article. It's more of a Q&A. So this, uh, the title of this is called Create Personal Connections at Work, a Q&A with Dan Schauble. And really this this tackles the idea of we're lonely at work. Mm-hmm. When you read this, the Q&A and some of the ideas in this, what initially, what kind of reaction did you have? I think it's so pertinent because right now we're all struggling for talent. And so we're always so focused on getting the next new person and we're not focusing on retaining our current employees. And especially with remote work being such a huge, what lots of employers and lots of employees see as a benefit, what we're not considering is kind of the repercussions from that of people feeling lonely. Yeah. And it's, I think this loneliness thing at work has slowly happened Mm -hmm. under Neath our eyes or whatever like it just mm-hmm. it just sort of happened and i think a lot of it's due to technology mm-hmm. how much of this is caused from social media and the way we use it either at work or even in just communication with our employees or family just whatever like yeah. work and personal life aside like what is this how has this changed i think that we rely so heavily on technology which i think there's great aspects to that but what the kind of the q a is going through is he's using the technology the correct way and using it not as like a crutch yeah so i can think of so many times where i could go have a conversation with somebody down the hall or i could just email them and just send it off and, and just hope for the best. So much right? easier, right? It's so much easier and so much more efficient. And so, and there are some, there are certain times where that's appropriate, but there are certain times where maybe a face to face conversation is better. Yeah. And so, think about I have lots of clients that use, you know, channels like Slack and, and Teams and all of that, where it's just the quick instant messenger and you're not having any conversations. Like you walk into their workplace and it's silent. All you hear is like keys typing. And I'm like, that just feels lonely to me. I know you read this stat. Uh, maybe you don't remember it, but I'm going to blow the listeners' minds because I read this. And I almost be ready thank, to have your God, minds blown. Thank God, I was sitting down because I would have I would have fallen. Um, this stat in this article says that Americans spend only 39 minutes a day in face to face conversation, but yet they are watching like three hours of TV. So. Like get that across. Like in mm-hmm. your mind, think about in in your day, mm-hmm. your uh, your spouse, partner, or whatever at work. Thirty nine minutes total, you're having like face to face conversation, and probably less for those who are not married and like maybe yeah. don't have children. Yeah. So go go home like myself, and just there's nobody there unless I'm talking to <laughs> you myself. Just got, you got Netflix <laughs> like, at home. That's it. exactly. Yeah, I'm talking to Instagram, going, "Why would somebody post that?" No. Yeah, that's less it's than crazy. an hour. Yeah. So you were spending less than an hour having face to face conversations with somebody. No wonder people are lonely, right? Yeah. And I think even sometimes you could feel lonely even if you're having like a face-to-face conversation with somebody because you don't know them very well. So maybe they work remotely lots of the time and you don't have an established relationship with them. Mm -hmm. You're busy. They're busy. Like, so it just feels lonely because you just don't know them. I think in the the striking stat in in that line there was three hours of TV. That To me, that tells me that people just default to the screen time. Mm -hmm. So whether it's they're on they have their smartphone and they're mm-hmm. they're watching so something accessible. on that or looking at social media and they they feel like they're connecting that way but they're not truly connecting. So this this relates really well to the workplace. We use email 
uh, like Microsoft Teams or uh, Slack, mm-hmm. those kind of tools as crutches. We mm-hmm. default to those and and don't go seek out the face-to-face interaction because I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I always feel like I don't want to burden somebody because they're I know they're busy. Right. We always use that busy term. But that's the default. We like, I don't want to bother them because they're busy. Yeah. That's, and I, I totally am, am guilty of that as well. But sometimes you have to think about what's the, what's the message that I'm trying to send? Mm-hmm. Would it be more effective in an in-person conversation, yeah, not I just agree. over email? And sometimes yeah. I hide behind email, right? If I'm saying things that maybe I'm too scared to say in person because I, I don't want to like hurt <laughs> people's feelings or I'm t- I don't want to be too, feel like I'm being too opinionated yeah. or dominate a meeting, sometimes I will say it over email. And is that the best way to, for like my own personal growth? No, it's, Probably not. maybe it's not, you know, yeah. so maybe I think you're you a better to, writer than you are. And I am. Yeah. I'm a much better writer than I am a verbal communicator. For, for me, I was, uh, it's sort of like, you know, bad choice of words here, but like verbal diarrhea in a way. Like you don't say what you mean. <laughs> no, yeah, like it, it just, just comes sort of out, out and you just like, you're so nervous yeah. about saying it. So you just want to like, just let it all out. Versus like email. You yeah, can I can carefully craft perfect... this. I can read it over and over again. I can have somebody else read it for me and make sure that the message is being understood. Yeah. Like that's people have time to sit with it and process it. And then we talk about it. So that's the whole communication breakdown is you have to really think about yeah the best way to deliver that message. Yeah. But. And it's funny, just the communication aspect. So as I think as people are becoming more lonely because they're defaulting to technology, people are just not able to communicate effectively anymore. No, and, and generations communicate so yeah. differently. I was just talking with Susie Weir, who's you know our VP of culture, uh, people, culture, people development. culture, training, all everything. That stuff. She's she does everything. Ma- master of the world. <laughs> Uh, she was telling me a lot of uh, the inquiries that we get for training nowadays is all about communication, mm-hmm. leadership, communicating effectively, like working in teams like that to me is it's so foundational and fundamental, but people just don't know how to do it anymore. Weird, right? It's an it's like, kind of like a lost art. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we get so focused on the day to day that we forget about those kind of what we consider basic skills and kind of younger generations as they're coming into the workplace, they communicate differently yeah. than other generations who've I been doing so this agree. for a really long time. Yeah. I mean, I relate this even to the podcast that we're doing right now. We're face to face right now. Mm-hmm. That has a very different feel to me than when I do them remotely. Right. You somebody. can't read body language. No. And it talks it's about so this different. in the Q and a too, like when you're doing interviews like they actually say to start shying away from doing the Skype interviews yeah. because you just can't get that real face-to-face connection with somebody and else. Of course, if somebody's across the country, you might not be able to make that work. But if you're doing final interviews, you need to be flying them out and having them meet with your team in person because yeah. you're going to get that that vibe and that mm-hmm. kind of like read off of them if they're good with your team, if yeah. they have good body language, like if they feel comfortable all that stuff that I you think can't you could, get. You can sense culture fit probably by seeing body language, seeing how they're yeah. interacting in an in-person interview yeah. versus video, not so much. Well, and like interview questions can be so like canned sometimes yeah. if you're not doing them correctly. Even if you ask a culture question, sometimes people can have a pretty good response and still not be a good culture fit. Yeah. So I'm glad he brought up the, the interview stuff because he poses a question in this Q&A where it just talked about like, how do you bring the human back to human resources? Like, how do you make it more personal? Mm -hmm. And this is your space. You just Mm -hmm. talked about video interviews versus in-person interviews. You're Mm -hmm. like, fly them out. Maybe Mm -hmm. for a first. For a first interview, I think, you know, phone screenings, all that stuff that can be done over the phone, over Skype, all of that. But if you're bringing it down to like two candidates and you're really trying to identify a culture fit, you have to bring them out. Especially if they're going to be super integrated with your team, it's it's yeah. it's it's critical. Let's let's talk about even like the onboarding process. So mm-hmm. we were actually talking about this internally the other day uh, with our culture committee, Excite. We were talking about okay, how do we make a really good onboarding process for employees? So mm-hmm. like, we have a lot of new people. We're growing mm-hmm. like crazy. A lot of new mm-hmm. faces. And we're talking about, okay, how do we streamline this? Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about maybe video and all these other cool things that we can do. Yeah. But... In my mind, I'm like, but what about like meeting with people? Yeah, you don't want to lose the human aspect to <laughs> it. You ha- that's where you have to really delve in and say, okay, what could we use video and technology efficiently for and things that can be communicated that way appropriately and what needs to be in person? So that's yeah. the decision you kind of have to make. And that's it's going to look different for different people in different industries. But yeah. 
What about what else about the hiring process? There's the interviewing, there's the onboarding, I guess. Mm-hmm. What el- what other ways could you bring sort of that collaborative team oriented face to face nature to that process? Because that's the first impression that somebody's mm-hmm. going to have when they enter the organization. Yeah. I think it's important to communicate kind of your employer brand from the start yeah. so that they know kind of what they're getting themselves into. And it's not a surprise, but you know, when you're interviewing, obviously you don't want to overwhelm them um, by having too many people on your team participate, but you also want to have a pretty good realistic view of the people that they're going to be working with. Yeah. Cause you're going to be able to identify pretty quickly if there's a rub and there's people who have maybe too much dominant mm-hmm. personality and they're going to clash. Yeah. Um, but this article, it talks about, um, it says, how can HR professionals make the hiring process more human? And it's talking about hiring for personality and training for skill. <laughs> We've so gotten you, away from that. Yeah. Like we were all like it's for all the last now. few years, it's been like skill, skill, skill. Like what's their education? How much you know time have they spent doing these certain things? And while that's important, we can't forget that like I can't train their personality. Yeah. I can't train them to be part of our culture that just needs to be inherent. That needs to be just part of their personality as well. So I always tell my clients at this point, because retaining talent is going to be a huge trend for 2019. So thinking about when you're hiring people, are they a good personality fit? Like, are they pleasant to be around? Like, I feel like sometimes it's basic stuff like that. Positive attitude, team mm-hmm. working skills, like all of that communication is all really important. I can train them how to do the job That's if they're actually, willing and able. You bring up a really good point because like if we're talking about how do you bring human back into the hiring process mm-hmm. and it, to me it seems like make it about your culture. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's What's it like working here? Ask values-based questions yeah. or behavior-based questions or right. to see if they align well with the kind of you know, organization you want to be right. or that you are. And if they self-select out, then you just saved yourself time because yeah. they weren't a good fit for you and you were going to be dealing with it down the road. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than like you hire for skill, which... They're I mean, really good at their job. Yeah. But, but like you, they that's, just rub everybody the wrong me, way. But to me, that, then you're hiring like a cog in a wheel in a way, right? Yeah. Like you're just kind of filling... You're feeling the need and you're not strategically thinking yeah. about your team and how they're going to work together. That's such a good, and I, I think like that. a lot of employers forget that yeah, sometimes. For and sure. I can easily read your resume and figure yeah. out what your skill set <laughs> is, right? I can't figure out what your skill set is yeah. based on your personality. So let's tackle this idea of remote work because mm-hmm. this is what's, you know, for a lot of organizations, this is what's uh, removing that, mm-hmm. that human element and making people lonely. Mm-hmm. You and I, like we work at home every mm-hmm. once in a while. You probably a little bit more than I do. I like being in the office and collaborating with people. Yeah. But when I'm project heavy, I, I, I love to stay home for an yeah. entire day and block off and like not answer my phone, no meetings, no nothing like that. But I'll tell you, like after a day of that, it's lonely. it's very lonely. And I, I need The silence that. is deafening it's, in my house. Like brutal. I have to have music on. I have to Same have here. something. Because like if I'm just sitting there at home for six hours, seven hours straight, just not talking to anybody, it is lonely. Yeah. And so I actually have made like the decision for myself that I don't know that I could work remotely full time. <laughs> I do not think I could do that. Like I I'm like either. you, I like to talk to people yeah. and I like to be around my peers and it's the energy that yeah that you're gonna get from. I other like people. being able to know I can ask other people questions. I can turn around and yeah. ask five or six other HR people what's going on with my clients and get some support, you know? So think about your remote workers who can't do that or have to make a really conceited effort to reach out to somebody and say, Hey, I need, I need some help. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, this is a trend that we're, that we're seeing remote working. I, I don't know if it's because of efficiency. It's because of talent that you have to hire across the country or internationally, whatever it may be. So some organizations won't be able to get around it. Mm-hmm. Remote work is going to be just become part of that the mm-hmm. culture and the way they do work. Mm-hmm. So there's got to be some way to still have that connection. Mm-hmm. And it may have to be all technology based. So yeah. what do you recommend there? I think it depends on your structure. But I think, um, you know, how often do they come up and fly up into the office? Yeah. Is it once a quarter? Is it, you know, is it something that they can tangibly look forward to and say, okay, I know that I will be you know, in the office a couple times a year? Do you have training seminars that you send them to that you could send the rest of the team to as well so they can all kind of cohesively learn things together? That kind of shared learning experience is, I think, something that's really valuable. Team building stuff. Yeah. 
do you have like an offsite all day? They need to come up for that kind of stuff. And using things like Skype and Slack and all of that stuff, that helps for the day-to-day yeah. stuff. But that really big picture, like team building culture stuff, they need to be present for that. Yeah, so. I would think like the cadence of one-on-ones with the manager and mm-hmm. then uh, team department meetings or whatever on video for remote mm-hmm. workers, that would be very important. And to make sure that you're sticking with those probably weekly or biweekly or something. Exactly. So the connection yeah. stays there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a the last question that was posed in this Q&A. What can HR and other business leaders do to encourage meaningful personal connections? And I love this one because it's more culture based and it's like, okay, how do we bring people together Make sure they're connecting. And I, you know, I think about this all the time. I'm, I'm on the culture committee excite at Zenium here. And so we're always trying to find ways to get cross departments working together mm-hmm. and making sure that people, for one, know each other. Mm-hmm. And two, just understand what each each side's going through. Like, I don't know what's going on in our payroll department right now. I don't know what's going on in our HR department. But like having those interactions with somebody like you or you know, somebody from that side. Like I need opportunities like that. So what can business leaders, HR people do to make sure that those things happen? I think there's lots of culture wise, there's lots of things you could do with team building activities, um, offsite, getting them outside of the workplace. We did an event here, Brian, I think you remember this a couple years ago where we had like a speed dating yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. with all of our different I departments. Do, it was fun. Yeah, course, it was really fun. Beer and wine was involved <clears throat> in that. Well, there's always beer and wine if there's an <laughs> event. <and it's> a <laughs> <laughs> book club, beer and wine. Yeah. That's, or actually just yeah. Wine. Yeah. That was really fun, though, because we all just got to sit and talk to people that we don't necessarily always talk to on a day-to-day basis. So thinking about things like that, like I said, the, the shared learning stuff. So maybe yeah. you send you know, people from different departments all to a, a seminar that mm-hmm. normally wouldn't talk to each other, normally wouldn't work together on a day-to-day basis, but they all have this experience now that they've spent time at. And have to come back and maybe, you know, Mm -hmm. report back to the team about what they learned. That's a shared experience. Do you remember about this time last year, we launched a thing called Zen Connects? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for listeners, what we did there was I went and bought like $400 worth of Starbucks. Was Starbucks like so happy to see you that day? Well, I bought them all on Amazon, which is funny. (laughs) So I bought, I, you could buy them like in. I think they're they're like packs of four or five, aren't they? I think it was packs of six. Six. Oh, okay. So it's like six ten dollar gift cards yeah. for Starbucks. So relatively low investment. Yeah, four hundred bucks. Yeah. I think I bought four hundred and I might have had to buy some more, which I might still have some in my desk. But yeah. I basically kept all the gift cards and then we gave a card and like a sign up sheet to mm-hmm. somebody to start. Mm-hmm. And they would have to go ask somebody to copy that's not in their department. Mm-hmm. So they would have, you know, coffee paid for. They're gonna invite somebody that they really don't work with and time away from the office time away from the office all paid yep and then they basically have a conversation with somebody that they don't usually get to work with yeah and so for us that was a way to for one work cross department but get to know people that they don't really get to know and and keep that human connection like that was that's what makes us special Mm -hmm. and i know a lot of organizations and people who are listening right now that's probably what makes your organization special is your people and do not let people get lonely because mm-hmm. that's, I think it's the worst thing that can happen. Silos start developing. Yeah. People start communicating less and having more problems. And I think that if you're a company who started as a small company and is growing, that is often one of the growing pains is yeah. it used to be a really small, intimate team. And now you've added 20, 30 people and you're mm-hmm. like, I don't know half of these people. Like, you know, I need to make an effort to get to know them. That's a really relatively low cost yeah. way for people to get to know each other outside of work. There was, there were some other ideas in here. I think you wanted to talk about it the, uh, like learning culture based stuff. So mm-hmm. like bringing people together for learning, talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that shared learning thing. It's, and it could be in house too. So mm-hmm. maybe you bring in a trainer to talk about some topic that you think is, is interesting to your team could be b- related to your business, could be more just on a professional development space too. start a book club. Like it yeah. just, you know, it really easy stuff that people can just bring people together because I think you'll find more often than not, people will appreciate that. And sometimes you just don't know people are lonely. Like nobody like raises their hand and it's like, excuse me, I'm lonely. Like nobody, nobody says that. 
And if you're doing a good job as a manager, maybe you have some mm-hmm. inkling of that, but especially those, the remote workers, or maybe it's the people who are just a little bit more on the shy side. Mm-hmm. They're not going to just tell you that they're lonely. So That's you have point. to kind of make the effort to just kind of push people to like get, <laughs> get to know each other and, and talk and collaborate because I think not off, you know, not only will they be closer, but you might find you know, great things come yeah. from collaboration. So you'll notice when I'm lonely because all this like my Instagram story feed will be like nonstop, and I'll be like, I'm just trying. <laughs> that's my way of like, here, I'm uh, here's what I'm up to. I want connection. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm yeah, lonely. Like I'm lonely. Just like respond to yeah, me or something. Yeah, but that's. I mean, that's a good point though. I think probably a lot of times that I'm posting more frequently on my Instagram story, You're it is maybe because I'm yeah yeah by myself. I'm it's lonely. A, I just want to get some kind of communication out, and then if people respond to it, then I don't. Phil yeah. is lonely. So it's a good point. Okay, let's fight the loneliness. So I, I Don't challenge be lonely. I challenge the HR professionals listening to this or business leaders to make it a point to do something in your organization to get people to connect more. Mm-hmm. Whether it's uh, bringing everybody together for a meeting or Go pizza happy hour. or yeah. happy, ha- happy hours. Happy really. hour. Who Absolutely. doesn't like happy That's hour? That's like priority number one. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love it. Paige, anything else you want to say on this topic? I think we've covered it, but would love to hear what you guys come up with. So let us know what you decide and love to hear from you. Okay. So I'll put a link up to the article, the the Q&A. It's in the Sherm magazine, Create Personal Connections at Work, a Q&A with Dan Schauble. Paige, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Brandon. A lot of fun. See ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Human Resources for Small Business podcast. Subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, be sure to check out our blog at www.zeniumhr.com forward slash blog and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn to hear about the latest in HR and leadership. The information on today's episode is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as legal or customized advice for you or your organization. This podcast is hosted and fully produced by Brandon Laws, that's me, and created and owned by Zenium Resources, Inc. For more information or to contact us, visit www.zeniumhr.com.